Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro, and today we are looking at installing Celestron's dew heater rings on your telescope. For those of you that might not be familiar, I'll run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com. And of course, this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. And having said that, let's get down to what you're gonna need to perform this installation. I mean, basically you really only need one tool, which is a uh, screwdriver, uh, Phillips head, and then uh, I also recommend having a Sharpie. And if you're wondering why the heck you'd need a Sharpie to install one of these things, keep on watching and you'll find out. Alrighty guys, so the installation is actually pretty simple. The first thing that you want to do is make sure that your scope is set up, you know, to where it's pointing up basically. That's very crucial because the only thing that's holding in this front corrector plate here is this ring that we're going to be removing and replacing, you know, with the dew heater ring. So if your, you know, if your scope is horizontal, this one will just flop out and fall and break and then you, you definitely will not be happy. So let's get down to the installation. Alrighty guys, like I said, the installation is actually pretty simple on this thing. Uh, the first thing that, uh, if you read the manual, that Celestron recommends doing is putting this, you know, um, little piece of paper that they have in here to, to protect your corrector plate. Um, honestly guys, this is actually specifically why I did not clean the corrector plate on this telescope. Um, if your corrector is pretty dirty and you put this on there, you really kind of have more chances of damaging, you know, like kind of putting fine scratches in your corrector than not having this thing at all. Um, honestly, I personally would not put this on unless you have like a brand new scope and even then I really don't see too much of a, you know, benefit to that. But anyhow, what you're wanting to, what you're going to want to do is just unscrew all these screws. The only thing that you really risk damaging here is if you, you know, while you're unscrewing these, you know, you happen to slip and you know hit the corrector plate this you know that's why they give you this ring but really just be careful i actually personally like to use a shorter screwdriver because i feel like it gives me more control so let's take out all the screws Alrighty, so having gotten all the screws out of the way, uh, we're basically essentially uh, going to lift this uh, ring up and, um, you know, it's not a bad idea to take a picture of it, you know, like how it was installed if you like, you know, if you're thinking you're ever going to reinstall it. But anyway, this is pretty simple and you can do this without touching the corrector. If your corrector is really clean, um, you know, like you wouldn't want to touch it. Um, and then basically, yeah, so mine was a little stuck. I don't know if you kind of noticed that, like it kind of actually picked up the whole corrector plate. Do not rotate the corrector though. Uh, so as you can see, there's like these little dimples here, right? So what we're going to have to do in the manual talks about this as well. You kind of flex the ring out a little bit and essentially it kind of comes right out just like that and as you can see guys so there's these little gasket deals right and they kind of want to stick to my corrector right but we'll just kind of put them right back to where they came from and then this one as you can see it doesn't really line up with the hole the screw hole so you just put the sucker right back in there and then that's all there is to it. Alrighty guys, so this is where the Sharpie comes in. Why would the heck would you need a Sharpie, right, to do this? Uh, well, you actually don't really need it, to, you know, per se to do this unless you're actually ever gonna take the corrector plate actually out of, you know, the scope because maybe you need to clean the, you know, backside of it. And if you do need to do something like that, I'm linking in a video right now of a tutorial that I've made on how to do that. Uh, but basically what you want to do is, um, and honestly, I can't, personally, I'd recommend doing this e either way, is just making two marks, right? So there's one mark and two marks, especially if your scope is newer, because, you know, if these screws ever get loose, right, uh, the corrector plate can shift around. I've actually seen that happen on older scopes. But if you have a newer scope and you take the time to, you know, just kind of make these two marks, uh, you'll know that that's, you know, how it's set from the factory because the orientation of these corrector plates do matter. So if you just take this out and put it in like whichever way, um, you'll never really get as sharp of an image as it, you know, it did, for, you know, from the factory because it's set this way from the factory for a reason. 
<clears throat> Alrighty guys, so here's the ring. Ready to rock and roll. So what I'm going to do is, you know, you, take, you obviously take this thing off, you don't need that. Um, so what you're going to want to do is, and you could have these, uh, the power cords clipped into their little locations. The way that you kind of orient this is, uh, you know, like if you look at your manual, it's talking about putting this compliance label in. Basically, you know, kind of like uh, to this, you know, orientation of the... Um, do plate uh however though as you can see like you know if i try to put this in there and now these little dimples won't let it go in there so what you got to do actually is line up these little notches that they give you so like this guy here and hopefully yeah so you see that slides in nice and good and i'm not really sure why they talk about you know orienting it this specific way but i'm just gonna do it okay so my hole is lined up there you know, and visually look down in the holes, you should be able to get the screws in there easily. Um, and mine look pretty good, like all the gaskets are aligned. So let's go and put the screws back in. Now, while I'm kind of putting these in, the manual does talk about like installing these or tying in these like in a, you know, crisscross uh, pattern, kind of like you didn't, you know, like put the bolts or the bolts or uh, nuts on that hold you know your car wheel if you're you know into mechanical type of stuff like i am um guys uh i've never really done that because there's really not too much uh pressure that the screen exerts on the corrector plate um but i you know i suppose it's not a bad idea so in this video once i start to stop talking in a second here that's what i'll do um so yeah Alrighty guys, so and uh, as I'm tightening the last screw here, you know, how tight do these need to be? They don't need to be very tight at all guys. And by the way, none of these should, you know, while you're tying them, uh, none of these should require a lot of force. You know, if you feel a lot of force being required, something's going on, you're probably cross threading it. So just back out the screw and see what's going on. Alrighty guys, so the ring's all installed. As you saw, the installation was pretty simple. Uh, look out for a future video. You know, obviously I've never used this thing. I, this is my first experience with one of these rings. So I'm actually kind of curious to see if this thing works better than like a deuce trap. So I will have a review of both this ring and actually Celestron's newer like aluminum dew shields that's made to, to work with this ring because it kind of has the notch, you know, for um, having the wires come through. So now hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Hopefully it'll help you install this thing safely. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments or anything like that, leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. See you guys in the next video. Bye.